Hello, happy Saturday. Well, Eric Dubai has released a child's book on YouTube called The Earth Plane, all about the adventures of a little boy who finds out that the earth is flat as he flies around in his plane. It's amazing. I've watched it all and I've cut out all the best bits, all the good bits just for you. Here they are. When I was your age, growing up in the country. There they are, all the best bits. I wonder if my co-host for the day has uh, seen that book. Have you seen it, Del? No! Give it a go, man. It's only for kids. It's got pictures and everything. You'll be fine. <sighs> anyway, that inspired me to write my own book about a teenage boy who finds out the Earth is a globe by driving around in his car. I'm just going to read that while you watch Chatbox Travels. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow I want to settle down. Until tomorrow I'll just keep moving on. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Welcome to Chatbox Travels, and if you're new to the show, essentially this is a bit where I review all the most intelligent comments I've received in my comment box and those that I've seen on other channels as well. But I'm struggling to find the ones I want today. No, it's not that one. Swipe right. No, not this one either. Del, have you been deleting my messages again? <laughs> ah, sorry, I found it. Practically demonstrate to me and everybody else how a large body of water can conform around a spinning ball. You want rid of us. Okay, show us and I guarantee we will never set foot on YouTube again. So that was from YouTube Flat Earther, Mr Cheswick, exactly one week before he did quit YouTube and never come back again. And just to show you I'm not joking, look at his channel now. Please come back, I'm going to miss you. So I wonder who called him out on his comment. I wonder what they must have said to him to convince him that he was wrong. Well, let's have a look. It's beautifully simple. <laughs> so it seems all Mr Cheswick needed to hear was that he was living on it, asswipe. Well done, Cat Mechanic, for you. You deserve an applause for that. Well done, my friend. If only it was that simple for all of them. Um, anyway, Cat Mechanic, here's your applause. So this next comment is from a, a serial stalker of mine called Digital Plague, but this time he's arguing with a Conspiracy Cat subscriber called Scott Mayer. Let's see what he's got to say. He's talking about rockets not being able to work in space. Space is a very big vacuum, far bigger than anything you can make on Earth. Nothing could survive in the vacuum of space without being ripped apart. Who's a dimwit? Who's a dimwit? That's what I'm going to finish with. Who's a dimwit? What do you think of that, Del? Utter lunacy. Absolutely. In fact, you are the dimwit digital plague. Did you know that the pressure between the top end of a swimming pool and the bottom of the deep end of a swimming pool is bigger than the difference between the vacuum of space and the inside of the LEM? I bet you did. Yeah, I know he didn't. It's thick as... But luckily, Scott Mayer was there to do a very fine job of putting him in his place. Well done, Scott Mayer. Another applause coming your way. Digital Plague, you will be back in next week's Chatbox Travels, so look forward to that, my friend. However, this week's next victim is me. Because last time out, I said this. Why can I look at the sun during uh, sunset, but not during the middle of the day? Well, the reason being, in the middle of the day when the sun is high up here, the sunlight is focused on a smaller area. When the sun's over here at sunset, the light is spread out over a bigger area, um, meaning there are less photons per square meter or per square mile, so the light is less intense. Now, there are other reasons um, as well, involving refraction, etc. So I was talking about why we can look directly at the sun at sunset, but we can't look directly at it when it's overhead. Now, while I wasn't completely wrong, in fact, I was right, it has been pointed out to me millions of times in my own comment section that really I should have made more of the refraction issue. And when the sun is at sunset, it's, the light has got to travel through more of the atmosphere, which causes more refraction, the light is more dispersed, and that is why it's safer to look at. So I do apologise. I did say something a little silly, but it wasn't as silly as this. Look, look, curved water, curved water on a flat surface. So oh, conspiracy cats is just another zealot. All right, man. God, he can dish it out, but he can't take it. Anyway, all that has given me a real taste for honesty. I wonder what else I can own up to. Um, you know what? I don't know anything about gyroscopes. I did a debate once with Anthony Riley and... Um, 
I promised them I was going to look into them, and I still haven't. I still know nothing about gyroscopes. Del, this is good for the soul. Do you want to confess something? Oh, I've not got any balls. I'm just going to continue to fantasize about my balls. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get your seats for the main event. Yippee! Hey guys, Nathan Roberts here. Uh, if you haven't checked out my website yet, please go to it. It's no, I won't be doing that. And please like this video. Mm, no. Subscribe if you haven't yet done so as well. Mm, no. Let's hit the bell so that you get notifications when I do go live because I do it quite frequently. No. And um, please share this message. No. But I wanted to give you guys a proof. This is really cool. We're in Myrtle Beach. It is June 24th. It is 8.05 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And right now we've got both the sun in, in, and the moon up at the same time. The sun being right there. I just changed the contrast so you can see it, right? All right, now we're going to turn and go this way. And there's the moon. Okay, I, I can't I can't zoom in on it. What I wanted to say is that that the way that the um, that the way that the 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 moon is waning its direction, it is making a uh, a curve like this. It's going in this this shape right here, right? Now, if if the if the sun um, is obviously a reflection of the moon. What? Then that would also mean that the Earth would have to be in between it, causing that that crescent that is going like this, where it's. Ah, right. Okay. I think I finally get what he's on about. What he's seeing is this. He's seeing the moon with a shadow covering this part here, but. Under his understanding of the moon phases, and he obviously went to the same school as Nathan Oakley, he expects that he should see this. And apparently because he doesn't see this, and he sees that, the earth must be flat. If the earth was actually in between the position of the sun and the moon to cause that, to cause that crescent, the crescent is the wrong direction. The crescent should be it should be this way, not this way. It should be this way if the Earth is a ball and it's in between the sun and the moon, but it's not. It is, it is actually going this way. The crescent is over the waning, that moon right there. So I've seen this a few times and it is low hanging fruit, but because I've seen it a few times, I'm gonna address it anyway. What our man here is saying is that the light from the sun should be hitting the Earth. And because the Earth is curved, the shadow cast by the Earth on the Moon should be curved, and we should see a shadow that looks like that. Now that's clearly, obviously, really dumb. Dow, 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 dow. <laughs> Will you stop playing up for the camera? And I swear, if you say water finds its own level one more time, you're not coming on again. <sighs> right, I know most people know this, but let's educate our man in the Moon phases. The light from the sun travels up here. Here's the Earth. Now the moon phases have got literally nothing to do with the shadow of the Earth. We always have one side of the moon lit up. But if I'm here and I'm looking at the moon, I clearly see nothing. This is dark. That's my new moon. If I'm here and I'm looking at the moon, then I clearly see a full moon. And I can see a half moon if I look this way, I can see a half moon if I look that way. And if I look at any of the intermediate positions, I get my gibbous and I get my crescent, etc, etc. The moon phases are not caused by the shadow of the moon, uh, shadow of the earth landing on the moon. All right. I hope we've cleared that up. Nathan, if you want me to explain that, maybe with pictures and tiny words, I can do that for you. Anyway, this whole thing has reminded me of something from my childhood. Can you guess what it is? This way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way.
here obviously be looking at the moon landing looking at whether or not it was an actually a hoax whether or not it was real i have some kind of cool evidence i want to show it to you guys i personally am kind of on the fence about this one well you shouldn't be on the fence because we all know the moon landing did happen but how well do we know the scientific response to the common points that moon landing doubters tend to raise it's the moon landing quiz let's crack on but I hope you guys enjoy. So let's jump right into it. First off is the biggest piece of evidence that everyone knows is that the flag was waving in the video on Apollo 11. So question one. Yes, the flag was waving. Is that because F, the lack of atmosphere on the moon and the low gravity meant that any momentum the flag had took a long time to dissipate? Was it G, it was being blown by the exhaust fumes from the LEM? Or is it H, the organization that are hiding the true shape of the earth from us who are so intelligent to coordinate this huge conspiracy across the earth were also simultaneously so dumb not to realize that they shouldn't have the flag flapping you got two seconds and the answer was f next question now the next evidence we're going to look at here is the lack of a blast crater from the actual lunar module itself. As you can see where it's highlighted there, it's circled, there is no crater. Now, if you're not familiar with how these things land, they have to use a thruster to push down so the thing doesn't just come barreling in and crash. There's actually a, a, a booster blowing, you know, huge amounts of energy out the bottom. True, there was no blast crater, but was that because of K? The moon has no atmosphere, so when the thrust comes out the LEM, um, it diffuses sideways instead of downwards. Was it L? The fact that the Sea of Tranquility is made of solid basalt rock and the amount of dust is about that thick on top of it? Or was it M? The people clever enough to hide the shape of the world from us for hundreds of years are simultaneously so dumb not to put a blast crater where the LEM landed. And the answer was L. But uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next piece of evidence which is this photograph which we move to here now the important thing to note about this picture is the angle of the shadows because there's only one light source on the moon that being the sun it is fair to say that all shadows should be or should run parallel because it's all coming on coming from that same source but as you can, can clearly see the shadow on the top rock is moving to the right when this the closer rock is moving more towards the the photographer himself and that doesn't really make sense thinking that there should only be one light like white source it should be off in the distance and the shadows should all run parallel so the shadows do not appear to parallel but is that because of a simple perspective and we can recreate that here on earth also there was more than one light source on the moon we have the earth shine and we have reflection off the astronauts or was it b that these photographs were actually taken on earth for a publicity shot for a film or was it c the people responsible for hiding the true shape of the earth from us were so dumb, they couldn't figure out how to fake the shadows. Two seconds. And the answer's A. But we're gonna move on to our next piece of evidence here, which is this picture we have here of an astronaut with what appears to be a reflection of something dangling um, I know it's really, really hard to see. I know this photograph is really low quality, but if you zoom in, and I'm going to try and zoom in as far as I can for you guys on this, it looks like the thing on the top right of his visor is just either floating there or suspended in some way, maybe by a cable, maybe by you know something hanging from a ceiling, but it's definitely nothing that should be there. There should be nothing floating, you know, just, just off and floating like that. So there was something seen in the visor, but what's the reason for it? Was it S, that the visor was cracked and there was condensation and ice forming on the inside? Was it T, that who gives a shit? That could have been literally anything and it is literally not proof of anything whatsoever. It's a smudge that somebody's highlighted and then just assumed means something. Or is it you, that the people who have fooled us for hundreds of years about the shape of the earth are so dumb that they would allow a light to be shown reflecting in the helmet of an astronaut? You've got two seconds. And the answer's T. Okay, but anyway, moving on to our next piece of evidence, 
which is of course the infamous C Rock picture where you can see a perfectly symmetrical capital C on this rock, which almost never, ever, ever, ever happens in um, nature. There's never, almost never any symmetrical kind of things like this, especially a, a human alphabetical letter that just, that just doesn't happen. It could be, you know, it could be an anomaly, it could be one of the quadrillion, but I'm not buying that personally. I feel like this is some kind of prop that, you know, is just supposed to be turned around. It's on the wrong side. So this rock does look like it's got a letter C on it. But is the reason for that, A, that this is actually a reprint and the original never had a letter C on it. And what actually happened was during the reprint process, somebody's hair, an eyelash or something landed on that and has caused that letter C in all the reprints. Is it B? Just a complete coincidence as a crack in the rock. Or is it C, that the people who are so intelligent, intelligent enough to make us believe that the Earth is not a globe for hundreds of years, were also simultaneously so dumb, they would take a photograph of a rock that somebody had written a letter C on when they were faking the moon landing. Got two seconds. And the answer's A. But moving on to another piece of evidence, which I feel is another great piece of evidence here. Which is, of course, this famous photograph, or should I say two photographs that are supposedly taken on Apollo 15 on separate occasions. If you overlay them one on the other, those mountains in the background match up almost scarily perfect, 100%. So these two photographs on the moon do appear like they've been taken from the same place, even though the astronauts said they were taken from five miles apart. Is that because of R? There's no atmosphere on the moon, so objects in the distance can be seen far more clearly, given the illusion that, that they are a lot closer, which is what caused the confusion here. Or is it S? The fact that the astronauts just forgot which days they took the photographs on, and actually these were taken from the same place on the same day. Or is it T? The people who were so clever as to fool us about the shape of the Earth for hundreds of years were simultaneously so dumb to make this mistake. And the answers are. Oh, there's one more thing I wanted to touch on, and that is the um, the little gravity or the lack there of gravity, where they in the in the videos they see the you see the um, astronauts experiencing what appears to be um, like I believe it's one sixth the Earth's gravity. I believe could be wrong, but as you can see here, he's galloping along, kind of just looking like he's floating. And people say, well, how could they fake that? Well, that's very simple. There's supposedly suspended by a chain system and a pulley and and there's lots of evidence out there that I could not find any good evidence or I mean I mean evidence but I could not find any good videos of it that wasn't copyrighted protected so I'm sorry I couldn't show that to you guys so some people do believe that the astronauts look like they're being pulled up by wires on pulleys etc is that because see the astronauts didn't know what to expect when they got to the moon so they took harnesses and wires and pulleys with them to help them stand up or is it D that's just how people look like they are moving in the lower gravity of the moon. Or is it E? That the people who were so clever as to hide the true nature of the Earth from us for hundreds and hundreds of years were simultaneously so dumb that they got caught out by this. And the answer's D. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> People at conspiracy cats have got a real blockage.